What is going on, Notre Dame fans? It is Thursday, and that means it's time for our post um, Marcus Freeman press conference. Freeman's last time meeting with the media before Saturday's game, 2 30 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff, only on Peacock. So make sure you go ahead and punch in that Google search. How do you stream on Peacock or whatever that may be if you don't have it? Um, we're going to Andy. As well, you're gonna have to pay what is it five ten bucks? I don't even. I, I've had Peacock for so long, I don't even remember how much it costs. I should look at my billing statements. <laughs> I think it. Yeah, I think it's five bucks. Um, but yeah, I, I actually kind of like Peacock. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but um, would obviously prefer it to not be only streaming on Peacock. But that's a different discussion for a different day. Tyler, so let's talk about Marcus Freeman's press conference. The big news being unfortunate news, and folks, please do hit the thumbs up before we dive into this. Um, uh, drop drop the thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and of course head to blueandgold.com for all of the coverage of this news we're going to talk about, as well as UNLV versus Notre Dame. But Eli Raritan, freshman tight end, who, I mean, started to get more into the offense as he unfortunately was recovering from an ACL injury that he had back in December. He's back healthy, and then a non-contact injury this week. Tyler, can you give us some more details? Yeah, it's just heartbreaking news for him because he was kind of coming into his own. And I know Mitchell Evans just came back, and he's he he went right into being Notre Dame's tight end number two in this last game. You saw him play 19 snaps against Stanford, and Raritan only played four. But before that, I'm pretty sure Raritan played 30, 35 snaps against BYU. So while Evans was still out coming back from his fractured foot, Raritan was the guy. He was tight end number two, and of course that – was a result of Kevin, Kevin Bauman tearing his ACL and going down for the rest of the year. So this tight end group, it's crazy how much has gone on within the room, knee injury-wise for sure. Evans had that fractured foot, but there's just a lot going on. And Raritan had played 76 snaps, which is second to Michael Mayer on the team. So there was a point there, like I said, he was the number two tight end. He was going to be the number three tight end with Evans in the picture. And now you've got a pecking order of Mayer. Evans and Holden stays who Marcus Freeman mentioned today as being the, the third guy on that totem pole now. So the shuffling at this room, look, you know what you have in Michael Mayer, arguably the best tight end in the country. He's played over 350 snaps. I think it is. He's caught uh, almost 40 passes for 411 yards and five touchdowns. He's the guy, but with what Notre Dame likes to do, you need another guy. You need a number two. That's going to be Evans now. And really you need a three and four, Right now, Notre Dame's kind of down to just three guys with Mayer, Evans, and Stays. Kane Barong, I was going to ask about him today, but the presser ran a little long. I'm not sure what his situation is. He hasn't been able to come back from his own ACL injury, which occurred about a year ago to the day. So just a lot going on with these Notre Dame tight ends, Mike. Tyler, what's interesting is, to my knowledge, Barong's back, and and he's uh, practicing fully, and um, he's – if you look at the tight end room of the guys who are available, um, he's the second ranked highest as a recruit behind Mayer. So, I mean, like he was a big time player coming out of high school. Um, and uh, I think it was the Virginia Tech game last year um, or the week after. or Maybe it was the week going into. I don't know. It was a practice injury. He tore his ACL. Um, not able to break into this, um, this, this Notre Dame tight end lineup. So, I had jotted down some injuries. Just this season, Notre Dame has had four, unless I'm forgetting somebody, four players get hurt this season and are out for the year. You got Raritan, um, Kevin Bauman, who you touched on, the tight end, uh, linebacker Bo Bauer. That was the news last week. Um, Tyler Buckner, of course, the quarterback. You've had other major injuries. Like before the season, you had Jadarian Price. He's out for the year. Aiden Kayana Ainon, interior defense lineman. He's out. Barong, who we just touched on, and Evans. Mitchell Evans, the sophomore tight end, he was hurt for a while. It's just like, man, for all the issues Notre Dame's had on the field, these injuries have obviously not helped. Yeah, Marcus Freeman said it today. Dr. Radigan, who's Connor Radigan's father, the walk-on wide receiver, his father is the team surgeon. And, I mean, not to make light of these injuries, but what else can Freeman say? He basically said Dr. Radigan is uh, he's going to remain busy. So there's no shortage of work for the team surgeon. And it's just kind of crazy – what can happen over the course of a football season? Because these are injuries that have really affected the way Notre Dame had liked to have played. I mean, start with Tyler Buckner. That was supposed to be the guy. He's supposed to be playing football right now still for Notre Dame. That has shaped the course of the season. Kevin Bauman was supposed to be 
the Robin to Michael Mayer's Batman, that hasn't worked out. All of a sudden you're down to Mitch Evans. And, and like you said, Kane Barong, this is a guy, if you want to go all the way back to that injury last year, I'm pretty sure he was going to be higher on the pecking order than maybe Bauman, than Evans. He was playing on special teams and he was really working himself into the picture and he hasn't been able to come back from that injury. And then you have a guy like Raritan now, this is the same knee that he tore his ACL on in playing basketball last winter. And it was non-contact in practice. So just, man, it, you it really, you feel for all of these guys because they were all supposed to be factors this year. Yeah. Heartbreaks for, for Eli Raritan in this situation. It really does. Um, there's been a lot of discussion with, I know you guys meet with Tommy Reese on Tuesday nights and, and Al Golden, some of the players, and then obviously Freeman on Thursday. A lot of discussion about offensive analysts and how Notre Dame doesn't have one. Can you shed any light on why this is a big talking point this week? Oh, I'll shed the light on it, and it's the, the light is beaming down on the situation. It's because the Notre Dame offense has been so – Jekyll and Hyde is the, the words used in the previous press conference with Marcus Freeman on Monday – Look, anytime a team struggles like this, you're going to point to any little situation like how can you improve? How can you get better from what it was against Stanford? I'm not sure if that was rock bottom against Stanford offensively. You can make a point that it was. I mean, the, the lowest amount of points they scored this year was against Ohio State. That was a much better defense. So considering the circumstances, what they did against Stanford was, was really bad. So you just look for every sort of thing like how, how can you make that better and an offensive analyst would not hurt. Look at programs like Alabama. I mean, we're always talking about Nick Saban's analysts, right? He brings in these guys. He kind of resurrects their careers. He does it on the defensive side of the ball, too. Charlie Strong, uh, I'm not sure where Charlie Strong is right now. I think he's an analyst somewhere else. I think was one. Yeah, you bring these guys in. They start as analysts. I'm, I'm pretty sure – I'm not sure if Steve Sarkeesian was yeah. – Alabama's I think offensive so. coordinator from the start, right? You bring him in, you say, okay, you're an analyst, and now we'll 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 let you work up the totem pole. So with Notre Dame, I, I'm not sure it's a thing where this is kind of like the the rehab program where you come to Notre Dame to be an analyst and resurrect your career. But Tommy Reese is a 30 year old offensive coordinator. He could use a veteran voice in his ear, telling him, hey, this is what I saw. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another example right now uh, with my alma mater in Texas, Gary Patterson is the best coach in TCU history, led, led, led that team to a Rose Bowl. TCU really has no business being in the Rose Bowl, especially when they were a group of five team. He's a defensive analyst at Texas right now. So these guys are seasoned veterans who have coached a lot of football and seen a lot of football. And if you're watching this Notre Dame offense right now, led by a 30-year-old offensive coordinator, you could probably use another set of eyes and, and another voice of reason in that room. I'm 29 years old. So I'm just a year younger than Tommy. I couldn't even imagine. It's it's hard enough for me, you know, running this YouTube channel, let alone I can't even imagine running the Notre Dame offense. But that's, yeah. uh, that's the situation Mr. Reese is in. Um, so, uh, folks, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, Peacock, UNLV, Notre Dame, um, full coverage of this at blueandgold.com. We will be live with Tim Hyde after the game um, to break it all down Sunday night. 7 p.m. Eastern time. Myself and Mike Goolsby will discuss it, and we'll get Tyler back on our YouTube channel Monday after Freeman um, meets with the media. So make sure to check it all out on our YouTube page. Hit that thumbs up. Head to blueandgold.com, and we'll catch you next time.